present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, it happens to be Saturday afternoon, October the 11th, 2014, and uh, it is my favorite month of the year, or, well, autumn in general is my favorite season, but uh, I like October. It's a fun month, <clears throat> the weather's perfect. The autumn foliage is peaking slowly towards us here in uh, northern New Jersey. And uh, halloween -y is in the air. Oh. And uh, I remember the old limerick, when the weather is hot and sticky, that's no time for Duncan Dickey. But when the frost is on the pumpkin, that's the time for Dickey Duncan. <laughs> I, I, I learned that as a as a teen. Okay, where am I? Hold on, where's my shillelagh, man? Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Greetings. Welcome to Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. I am your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21. I am here, or we are here, at the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. And uh, I would like to introduce right now my illustrious co-host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? Good. How the hell are you? Excellent. I Good. Think, I think. Well, I, I say the same thing. But it's nice. It's well. It's it's overcast. Uh, it's rainy. It's damp. Yeah. It's it's a great weather for salamanders and frogs. It is, has that nice Halloweeny look to it. You know, if you add a lot of fog, for the frog. But um, let me just start off with a few tidbits here. Tidbits. Okay. There's a guy running for Bergen County. Uh, he's running for re-election in Bergen County. What is he, a uh, freeholder? Uh, who's a? Uh, uh, what does Donovan do? Donovan is a Republican, and it's a she. Kate, Kathy Donovan. Yeah. Of she course, she used she's to be the court clerk. County clerk, and she then you have uh, Robert Avery. Let me guess, he's a Republican too. Yes, of course. Freeholder here, here in New Jer uh, Bergen County, New Jersey, where we live. Bernadette. Uh, Oh, her her name got distorted when my tea spilled on the... <laughs> ah! Anyway, what her name is is not important because since she is also Republican, they will not get my vote. So what her name is is insignificant to me, but it's called the Donovan Team 2014. whoop de doo Vote column one, yeah, sure. Vote column one, November the 4th, 2014. Oh, yeah, sure. And this is why I saved this, because I like to read the bullshit yeah. that, you know, Republicans um, put in their campaign uh, promos. Let's see, Donovan team, better services, less spending. Better services? Not for the little guy. Um, the, the, now you see why it's going to be a problem I, if we don't leave the door open. <laughs> it's going to interrupt the show. Does this mean you want to go out? One of the mousers wants to go out. Well, you know what? I'm not doing this throughout the whole goddamn show. Hold on. Go. There she goes. No, 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 close it. Nobody else is going to get out. I'm not going to interrupt the show. I'm sorry. Professionalism. Nobody's going to go out. Professionalism. You're going to freeze. No, then I'll close it. Jeez. Anyway. 
Hey, old Bezel Bub is always throwing monkey wrenches at this agenda we have here. Okay. Bernadette Walsh, mother, wife, taxpayer. Hey, hey. Wow. Who the hell ain't a taxpayer? Wow, yeah. Corporate Something relocation expert, former Ridgewood councilwoman, supports tougher ethics laws and pay to play rules. Whoa. Pay. Republican. Pay. Tougher ethics laws? What is this pay to play? Ooh. It's, it's, it's like the, 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 the corporation, you know, gives you money and then you, you play with them. You play with their balls and their, and their you mean the CEO, no, you, you, you play you with their them, dick and their balls? You give them what they want. You give them what they want. They and, the, and the reason why they get what they want is because they you, pay it. they're throwing their grease in their palms, right? It's called bribery. Yeah. Call it bribery. Call it what it is. Yeah. Bribery. Interesting, you know, and then it says, uh, save taxpayers over $219 million, uh, blah, 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 leadership, 49,000 jobs in Bergen County to working families, bringing, bringing 49,000 jobs. Oh, they didn't bring them already? Millions more for classroom education? Improved services for seniors and families? Gee, that doesn't sound like Republicans, this, does it? This doesn't sound like Republicans Oh, to maybe, me. wait a minute. It could be like Scott Garrett. He lies when he wants to get reelected. Okay. He becomes the, uh, you know, the uh, benefactor of, yeah. like, that stuff there. But when he's in office... He wants to get rid of Social Security. He wants to get rid of welfare. He wants to get rid of Medicaid. He wants to get rid of food stamps. I, yeah, true. Yeah. i never seen a Republican, once he's in office, right. do anything to benefit working families and senior citizens That's correct. or the poor. That's correct. Nothing. No, none of the above. You know, and um, I noticed something else here that was interesting. Uh, Oh yeah, improved services for seniors and families, hogwash. <laughs> um, classroom education, millions? I thought Republicans love to they cut... They don't like ed public education. They don't like it. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And then it says here, um, yeah, all right, vote the Donovan team, protecting families, children, seniors, and young adults every day. whoop de do. Young adults who are stuck paying off a student loan possibly uh, for the rest of their lives, if not ever? Well, you need to help them banks, don't we? Now, how are they helping young adults if Republicans are all for high interest on student loans and, and uh, um, arranging it so student students, young people, cannot file personal bankruptcy and add their tuition? Then how can they be for young adults? They can say it, but the proof is in the pudding. People can say anything they want. That's correct. These and are all, obviously, these are all politicians lies. politicians can lie. These are all... By law, Republican they can lies. lie. Okay? Yeah, oh, they call, um, she, they, the, the, the Kathy Donovan calls, uh, Oh, we, oh, of course they're going to mention this, that, you know, uh, government spending is bloated and wasteful. What about Republican uh, uh, taxpayer spending in terms of uh, uh, wars for profit and, no, 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 no. and, and corporate subsidies? They don't think about that part of it. And what about corporate subsidies? What about giving billions to corporations? No, 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 no. That's no, not no. bloated and wasteful no, taxpayer no, no. spending? It's the food stamps, man. It's the food stamps. The poor, the poor are to blame. They love to scapegoat. Yeah, they love to scapegoat the poor. I'm telling you right now, if the goddamn the cats one at a time are going to go out, I'm going to leave the door. This is bullshit. This has never happened before. No, but it's got to happen. I know it happened a long time ago when there's one cat, then the second cat, then the third cat no, wants no, to go no, out. And I got to keep on closing the door. That's in the summertime. 
this is not a time that they would be normally. Well, they're coming over here, here staring at me. It. There must be a reason. There's got to be a reason. I'm not doing this going not back normal. and forth because it doesn't look professional. So nothing. Every every goddamn cat that wants to go out, I got to open the door a thousand times. But anyway, um, well, that's how you get out. But it doesn't look right on video. Uh, not when you bring it up. No, it doesn't it, look right. It, it doesn't look it. right when every time a cat wants to go out, I got to get up and open the door. It doesn't look right. If I leave the door, if I leave the screen on, it and, doesn't look right. And the cat goes. You make a big deal. And the cat about goes it. in and out by themselves. That's one thing. Like like what exactly. we normally do. But the point is, when something disturbs the show, or whatever. You don't make a big deal about it because that makes it worse. You it's go called the, the fucking flow. it's called the fucking uncensored show. That's what it's exactly. called. Exactly. That's what it's called. And if it's uncensored, what does that mean? It's uncensored. And it means that unforeseen things may take place. Yeah, like me getting up a thousand times for every goddamn cat that wants to go in and out. Instead of me having the screen partially open so they can go in and out by themselves. Anyway, getting back to bloated spending, wasteful spending. It's hypocrisy, of course. You know, welfare for the rich is fine, of course, you know. Um, <clears throat> now, mind you, I love this company. This is a little, a little uh, a chiseless hall of shame, but not too harsh. Because I like the company. I'm taking this multivitamin because it seems the most closest thing to a natural multivitamin you can find and I have a lot of respect for the company. They've been around for many years. They're experts at herbal products. It's called Nature's Way. This particular multi is called Nature's Way Alive. You know, containing phytonutrients. Well, I hope it ain't Nature's Way I was dead. dead. Well, alive meaning it has phytonutrients, enzymes, and mixed in with the multivitamin. Nature's Way Alive for people uh, 50 years of age and up, 50 plus. They have a woman's formula. See it? Okay, I'm taking this now. It's a, yeah. it's, it's a one a day type vitamin for, you know, the hub of the wheel for the basic nutritional program. It's it's the center, the nucleus, cornerstone. the cornerstone of the hub of the wheel. I mean, it's not enough, but it's 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 found it's a foundation. Uh, it's a thousand times better than, than those stinking Centrum or uh, or Centrum, than Flintstones? Centrum Silver or Flintstone vitamins or <laughs> Yeah, no, it's when way coal better. Coal tar dies? Yeah, yeah. And crap. But anyway, this is what bothers me. Only 50 tablets. Now, usually supplements come in a 30-day supply, which is one month, or a 60-day six, a supply, or 100, which is two months. Or if it depends how many how many capsules you have to take, or tablets. But usually, give or take, you know, you have either a month or two months worth of supplementation, or more, of course. In the case of my vitamin A and D, I have a lot more than two months worth. Okay, it's a relatively cheap supplement, very important supplement, crucial, but inexpensive. Okay, but they, they only give you 50 tablets, which means it is 10 days short mm. of a two month supply. It's 10 days shy of a two month supply. Now, it's like the uh, the pound of macaroni that normally used to be a pound, 16 ounces, now all of a sudden it's 13 ounces. Or the, the, the can of coffee, which was always a pound, mm -hmm. and it also is either 12, 13 ounces or whatever. Now they can't just throw in 10 tablets and make it an even two month supply of multivitamins. They gotta short you, you know, 10 tablets and make it 50 tablets. I mean, come on. More turnover. What I'm trying to say is they say they care about the customer and giving you the best value for your money. They don't care about that anymore, but they say it because it sounds good in their advertisement, but they really don't. I mean, how nitpicky and cheap, you know, does a company have to be? 
to give you 13 ounces of whole wheat pasta instead of 16 ounces and to give you only 50 days worth instead of 60 days worth. I mean, it, they I don't buy, really give a shit for the consumer. I buy my uh, multi in a 200. You already know about this. 250 supply. Yeah, but this is this is nature's way loaded with phytonutrients. I know, but do they have a bigger size? Mm, no, that's the problem. They don't. Ah. If they had a two-month or three-month supply, since I like the product, I would buy it. But, but to be, you know, to be a week or so short of an extra month, you know, it's ridiculous. It's like it's it's very um, uh, um, uh, petty. It's money making. It's petty. Well, what do you expect? It's a big corporation. I don't care how good they you know sound what? or you know you I, like or whatever. I don't care. They make their their object is to make money for themselves and their shareholders. I don't care. Period. I don't care what right wing teabaggers say or Fox News or the Republican Party says. This type of capitalism really, really sucks. Mm -hmm. It sucks. A lot of people know that, but uh, well, how do you change the system? It's only for the rich. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what do we got here? I want to say, tip my hat if I had a hat. Um, uh -huh. To um, I want to say something positive about Obamacare. I know everybody to the right, as in right wing, is constantly nice. <laughs> Go my, killed somebody. My pen just went. Go to put an eye out. My pen just went flying across the room. Hey, are there some unseen forces here? Ooh, hold on. Ooh. You saw that. Well, I don't know if you saw that on on video, but Obamacare is always getting attacked. But then again, so is Barack Obama. For every little thing he does, let me tell you something. Obamacare vastly improves the quality of life for low income and poor people because these people now have complete health coverage that they never had before including a hundred percent prescription coverage the mm -hmm. generic brand of course hundred percent prescription coverage no deductible to worry about no co-payment completely covered when I mentioned this on on our Facebook group the the right-wing teabaggers got very upset about that mm -hmm. uh, like like they feel that the poor should not be covered because yeah. they sit at home on their fat ass eating Oreo cookies in front of the we TV or trans fats yeah well this is what they said the people mm -hmm. the people that have a Medicaid card or welfare or food stamps are sitting home one guy said I think it was I don't know if it was uh, one uh, it, it was uh, I'm not positive I don't it could have been Jono, but I'm not sure. Ah. But I, there was another one, like him, a right winger that, that probably doesn't have a pot to piss in. He said, "You know, these people have always been covered. The poor have always been completely covered uh, in health care." I says, "Oh, before Obamacare, what did the poor have? A Medicaid card and or possibly charity care at some local hospital." You think that is a big treat for the poor to have just charity care or a Medicaid card? Most doctors do not accept Medicaid for the obvious reasons. They don't pay the doctor much. The physician gets very little. So therefore, they, because uh, American doctors are greedy, they refuse to accept Medicaid. Oh, that is a big luxury according to teabaggers mm -hmm. for the poor to have a Medicaid card with no Obamacare so you're doing the poor a big favor by giving them a little food stamps a lousy hundred and forty dollars a month like it is in New Jersey for welfare all these all these crumbs all this chicken scratch mm -hmm. chicken feed this is a big luxury according to teabaggers hey we're giving big bucks to the uh, private contractors under the Pentagon they never mention that Pentagon law, law can lose trillions of dollars and can't account for it. That's fine. Yeah. But, God dang it, we got to cut those food stamps. 
Yeah, that'll that, reduce the budget, save the money. Hey, right. Scott Garrett is yelling that and the stuff. Only, and the only drawback is that the middle class still has the tax burden on their back, thanks to Ronald Reagan, and the only and also the rich do not pay most of the taxes, which they should. So, okay, maybe or as corporations did, thirty-two percent they once right. paid. Now it's barely ten percent. You know, maybe the tea baggers, the ones that pay, maybe these tea baggers are middle class and they're being strangled with the cost of living and taxation, but they never, ever point the finger at the fact that the rich get more welfare than the poor will ever get. Uh huh. Billions every year. They never, they scapegoat the poor because the dummies listen to their Republicans that they voted in. They listen to Fox News. They, they think the poor are getting something for nothing. Something. You know? They yeah. think the poor are getting a lot for nothing. Or a lot even. They're not getting a lot for nothing. That's okay. the problem. They don't understand. They scapegoat the poor. They call themselves Christians, most of them, and uh, they don't understand the biblical admonishments mm -hmm. towards the poor and the working man right the working man deserves his uh, his pay a decent wage no they want minimum wage and they don't want it to go up you see oh yeah i'm going to mention that at the end uh -huh. all right let me go to phase 2 of my tidbits i think tidbit sounds better than monologue uh, conservative. Now, I, I'm I'm only I'm only using this phrase because I read it in the article, but I'm really I was laughing when I read the article. Conservative icon. <laughs> um, um, conservative icon of, of Phyllis Shafley. Sh sh Schlafly, Schlongfly, Shafley, uh, Shafly. Shafly. I'm gonna. Say, oh, I call her Fly because. She is, to me, she is a mere fly. The old bag, I saw her photo, yeah. conservative icon, old bag, and I'm adding that, by the way. Phyllis Shafly, you can, you can be nice to her and call her Shafly, but, and Rush Limbaugh, the oh. both of them, okay, give or take, made the same statement that uh, President o o Barack Obama let Americans, people with Ebola, with the Ebola virus back into the United States to get revenge for slavery and make the United States more like Africa. Uh, of course, Asenheim, preposterous, stupid statements made by the both of them. And it's amazing how these people get, fa get FaceTime. <laughs> and, and, and the same thing goes for Sarah Palin and... Um, uh, a Huckabee who should fuck a bee, who should leave and go fuck a bee, and uh, B Barbara Bachman. But the, but Michelle. these two are really nuts. These Michelle two. Bachman. Michelle Bachman. I'm sorry. Michelle Bachman. Bachman Turner Overdrive. But uh, what a stupid statement. So so what Rush Limbaugh is saying, and and Phyllis Old Bag Shafly is saying, more or less is that the uh, Ebola virus is very selective. It, it is programmed only to infect... Blacks. Blacks. Yeah. Or white, no, according to them, whites. Or black, yeah, whites. In other whites. words, if Obama is letting the people... Well, the who blacks are bringing it back. Yeah, if Obama <laughs> is allowing the people infected positive with Ebola back into the United States yeah, yeah, yeah. to get revenge for black Americans, then that means that these conservatives think Ebola is going to say, huh, we're finally in the United States, let's help out uh, black, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the, the black um, conspiracy to get revenge for slavery and turn the United States more like Kenya. Because they're still they're still saying he was born in Kenya, mm -hmm. Barack Obama, and let's just infect white people. I mean, not thinking that the Ebola virus is not selective; it will infect whomever it can get into. 
Well, they did the same thing with AIDS. They blame. They blame. Well, they didn't uh, think any white person, any uh, decent person, could get it. The same. Oh, okay. And then you got children getting it, and then you got, uh, you know, uh, well, tennis players getting it. What I don't understand. Women. What I don't understand is the. Uh, I know. There was a reading done a long time ago between you and uh, Michael J. Talmo. I think Michael J. Talmo originally wrote it, and it, and it, it talked about the AIDS hoax. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I have, I have only one question about that whole subject. When a person gets tested and, and they test positive for the HIV virus, what exactly are they finding in the microbodies? antibodies because the the HIV virus has never been seen really they don't know that the HIV virus is the cause of AIDS mr. Fauci and the other Gallo and etc they made this big deal back in the 80s right that this was the virus but they never found it they never saw it did they ever tell the media this of course not of course not. They wanted, they, all did a whole big thing about they wanted it. They wanted to blame gays. They wanted to blame it all on the homosexual well, community. Well, that's what right? they thought. That it, was in, it was totally in the uh, gay population, period. Right. You know? Right. But then there are people who share needles, you know, drug users. But even to this day, you, if babies. you're talking to officialdom, they still say HIV. So what there's the the, so when somebody tests positive, they they're only seeing your antibody level, just the antibodies. That's all they're seeing. So and that, the tests are not accurate. They have never seen physically seen an HIV virus. No. You hear that, people? No. No. All right. That's it. You heard it. Okay. Last thing. Oh, these Republicans. Gotta love them. You know. You will love them. Sarcasm, of we'll course. We'll deal with them. Sarcasm, of course. Uh-huh. Iowa Republican Joni Ernst. Ah, uh, the hog castrator. N-S-T. Ernst. Yeah, she Running. castrates hogs. Very nice. Running for, uh... U.S. Senate mm -hmm. in Iowa wants to abolish the minimum wage, of course, of, of course, course, and says that seven dollars and twenty-five cents an hour is enough, enough Ooh. to live on. What this means is that a person in Iowa, okay, uh, would need to work seventy-three hours a week to afford a modest two-bedroom apartment. Ooh. 73 hours a week at 725 an hour so in other words to a person like uh, uh, a politician like Joni Ernst who probably doesn't have to worry about living in a decent nice modern clean place in a nice neighborhood she probably has money she probably has her retirement all you know all set up for her and, 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 and the best health insurance, so on and so on, the best food on her table. She, she doesn't have to worry about survival or making ends meet or paying the bills. <clears throat> she feels 7.25 an hour is more than enough to live on. Why don't these Republican politicians set the example and why don't they try to live on 7.25 an hour? Bingo. Joni Ernst. Chisler's Hall of Shame, number one inductee. They yak, 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 but they never, you know, they never step on a dime. They, 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 they don't put up. They're always, yeah, they don't put, they don't put, put their they money. They don't shut up either. They don't put up, they don't yeah. shut up, they don't put their money where their mouth is. Yeah. So, yeah, Joni Ernst feels that, uh, you know, all this crap, you know, like, it's like the teabaggers that say, well, the poor... You know, they make it sound like the poor are living in a lap of luxury by getting. Hey, they welfare. have refrigerators, man. What's the matter with yeah, you? Yeah, who who is was that? Uh, uh, 
Ba uh, Michelle Bachman who said refrigerators and air conditioning was a yeah. luxury. No, yeah. I think it was Hasselbeck. Elizabeth. Oh, uh, that's a big thing amongst the Republicans. Anyway, so any one of them put the it One congressman or something did say that shit. Yeah, the, Repu you know, the Republicans perfect. feel that a refrigerator and an air conditioner is a luxury to the poor, and that uh, it, you know, then that they, they must be cheating on their welfare to to be able to have them. Well, Mr. Carnegie said that what we once knew as uh, 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 luxuries. Are necessaries to the to the, today? Yeah, modern necessaries in modern li life. Right in the twenty first century, a refrigerator and an air conditioner are necessities. That's correct. It's a different time, folks. But these people are living back in the fifties. Hey, doesn't you know? do, don't new cars today by default come with air conditioning? Yeah, and uh, and and power and all kinds power of safety steering. stuff. Power steering, power brakes, airbags, airbags, safety, belts. Uh, power windows. You know, they have the and now they have the new climate control air conditioning. But you, the poor should not have cars. Oh no! What no. should they have? Scooters, skateboards? No. What should they depends have? Depends on you know how far their their work is away. Hot air balloon. <laughs> they can buy hot air from the Republican Party. Oh yeah. To fill up their balloons. Anyway, people, I just want you to know something very important. Trickle-down economics is a bunch of bullshit. It was never meant to work. The trickle-down economics from Ronald Reagan is total nonsense. What you have is siphon up to the top, I would say, between 1 and 20 percent. Siphon up economics to the fat cats. Mm -hmm. Never trickle down, and you, you know that as well from some of the banners that you will see on this show, especially the one with the wine glasses. Dr. Bill has seen that one. It's a good one. You know, where the wine glasses never overflow and trickle down. No. They no. just get bigger and bigger. They get bigger. bigger for the top. Yep. That's it. That's true. So, and I just want to remind you, November the 4th is not that far away. No. Everybody, no matter who you are, no matter how poor you are, regardless, get your asses out there to the polls and vote. It's very important to vote. If you do not vote, you have no right to complain. Vote. It's your duty. Uh, and uh, and uh, also I want to say that uh, voter IDs, aside from the ID you always use before to vote are meant to discourage the little guy from voting. Yeah, because uh, what are they cost? Forty-two bucks. Forty-two bucks. That's a poll tax. So you're Number right. One. So you're right as an American to be able to vote. Mm -hmm. If you're poor, is taken away from you because you don't have the forty-two bucks to pay for the ID. Yeah. And who started this law? Republicans. I rest my case. Because they have to, uh, Republicans, you know, don't carry the day as far as voters are concerned. So the less voters vote, the better it is for Republicans. True. That is true. Yeah. And they get away with it, too. Yes, they do. This uh, voter ID. Now, uh, as far as New tax. Jersey is concerned, and I, I presume it's like this in every other state, when you register to vote, you get an ID with your signature on it Listen. that you present when you go to the voting place to vote. So why would you need another one? True. Or I, why would you need look, a picture one? I um, am registered as an independent. I mean, progressive independent, but they don't care about that. I'm, I'm registered as an independent, which means I cannot participate and vote in the primaries only in the major elections, mm -hmm. which is fine with me. Um, and uh, for good reasons, of course, I'm registered as an independent. When I go there, I'm already in the book in mm -hmm. my district, and I have to sign. You present your registration card, whatever it is, yeah. and you sign the book. Now, if Joe Schmo comes three hours later and 
presents a, a, a thing, James Madonna, and signs the book. Oh, wait a minute. You've already signed this. You, you've been here already. Yeah, well, so where's the voter fraud? Where's the fraud? There is none. Where is the fraud, Republicans? They don't want the little guy to be able to vote because they know the little guy and the poor are going to vote against them. I... Democrat or most of them anyway. independent. Yes, not the tea baggers. Oh yeah, the uh, the people that are spellbound by yeah. their their crazy, unproven religious cult. Ah. The people out in the Bible Belt states and, and the red states that are, don't have a pot to piss in, but they vote Republican because they believe in the nonsense that 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 are told to them. I think I asked the question the other day. How many? How many? How? How has a Republican ever helped you? They've only hurt you. Where's the proof that they made your life better? Yeah. All those. There is none. All those poor schlubs in Kentucky. Let's just use Kentucky as an example. Wolf County. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll use Wolf County because that's the poorest county. But, all right. All these poor, poor people in Kentucky that are right wing and vote Republican. How is their life getting any better voting for people like uh, ugly old turtle face uh, Mitch McConnell uh -huh. and or, or, or um, uh, Rand Paul? Rand right? Paul, yeah. How is their life improving? Has you, ask yourself that question. Has your life improved? I would say it got worse. It seemed to work for Ronald Reagan back, back, uh, the, back then. Remember, the, he says, are you better off today than you were? Under Carter, you know. Well, Carter, he made some blunt. He had some blunders. Yes, he did. He did, but but Reagan, I think, because you know why, had the glamour of Hollywood on his side. They get bad advice. Look at look at Barack Obama. He's hired all these corporate jerks to administer the programs in all these different areas. Did anybody twist Barack Obama's arm to hire? All these Clinton corporate did it jerks. Too. Clinton did it too. Where do you think he got the advice to to uh, 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 sign off uh, Glass Steagall? From Summers. From corporate people. That's correct. And 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 Hillary has made it obvious that she is a corporatist also. So anyway, aside from all of this, let us sink our teeth into these readings. And let me see how much time we have concerning the sinking of our piranha teeth. You? All right. Well, we'll we'll just we'll get through it. We'll bang out. All a few. right. We promised to go into this one last week. So oh, we you remember get this one done. your smart cookie? I remember everything. Okay. Comedian Tracy Morgan and others in his limousine were not wearing seat belts during a June crash on the New Jersey turnpike that critically injured him and killed a fellow comedian. Walmart alleged on Monday in its response to Morgan's lawsuit. The lawsuit filed in July in Newark Federal Court by Morgan and three other survivors of the crash alleges that Walmart was negligent when the driver of one of its tractor trailers struck the limousine van of the former Saturday Night Live and 30 Rock star on a Middlesex County portion of the turnpike the night of June the 6th. Walmart's response was that Morgan and the others in the limo could have avoided being hurt by wearing seatbelts. Yeah, well... Who hit who? The truck hit them, right? Correct. Uh, from behind, I guess. Correct. I'm assuming. Plaintiff's injuries, if any, were caused in whole or in part by plaintiff's failure to properly wear an appropriate available seatbelt restraint device, Walmart's Monday filing said. By failing to exercise ordinary care in making use of available seat belts, plaintiffs 
acted unreasonably and in disregard of plaintiff's own best interests. Mm -hmm. The retailer also denied or citing an ongoing investigation by the National Transportation Safety Board, declined to respond to nearly all the allegations presented in Morgan's lawsuit. The suit alleges that Walmart knew or should have known that Kevin Roper, the 35-year-old Georgia man who was driving the tractor trailer, had been awake for more than 24 consecutive hours when the crash occurred. James McNair, 63, a comedian, better known by his stage name, Jimmy Mack, died in the accident. A report by Federal Transportation Safety Inspect Investigator said Roper was driving 65 miles per hour in the minutes before he slammed into the limo van. The speed limit on that stretch of the turnpike near Cranberry is 55 miles per hour, but was lowered to 45 miles per hour that night because of construction. Mm -hmm. Morgan was hospitalized <clears throat> in critical condition with a broken nose, ribs, and leg. He was moved about two weeks later to a rehab facility and in July he was spotted in New York City using a walker as he left the doctor's office. The other plaintiffs are comedian Artie Fuqua, Fuqua Morgan's assistant Jeffrey Melia and Malia's wife, Krista Malia, who was eight months pregnant. She died, right? No, no, no. Jimmy Mack died. Oh. Well, <coughs> if, um, I know with traffic accidents, if you hit somebody from, from behind, the person in front of you automatically has the right of way you know, in other words, you are automatically to blame because the law states that you must be in a, a certain number of car lengths behind the car in front of you, the vehicle in front of you, and you should have the ability, therefore, to stop your vehicle in an emergency or avoid the accident. You should have enough room. You're supposed to have your car in control at all times. Right. Now, yeah. as far as the Walmart uh, commercial vehicle is concerned. The driver was severe, severely sleep deprived. Therefore, uh, and why was that? probably passed out at the wheel and hit the limo. And so, uh, you know, why was he sleep deprived? And uh, I'm glad you asked that, uh, Doctor Bill, because the greedy scumbag Walton family that owns Walmart. Uh, I guess one of the wealthiest companies in the world. One of. Uh, uh, it is. It is. Yeah. It is the wealthiest. They uh, do not have. They do. They do not make enough profit. So no, they uh, they no. uh, jeopardize the health and well-being of their drivers, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who are probably non-union. I don't think they're. They team don't allow unions. I don't think they're teamsters because the teamsters would kick their ass. The Waltons, they wouldn't be get away with this crap. So, um, go Teamsters. Anyway, um, the um, sleep-deprived uh, drivers are actually um, uh, uh, posing a, 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 a severe a, a safety risk on America's highways mm -hmm. by by being sleep-deprived by having a uh, an unhealthy work schedule. Ah! The unhealthy, unrealistic, unreasonable work schedule based on greed from Walmart mm -hmm. that is causing these drivers to be sleep deprived. You know, uh, driving for hours without rest. Yep. Okay? Yep. Maybe they have dispatches that are always on their ass. 
you know, like similar to the uh, the uh, the other scumbag company, UPS, that has dispatchers constantly calling their drivers to find out where they are. How come they're not here? How come yeah. they're not there? You know, you're behind schedule, blah, 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 yeah. and stuff the, like uh, that. The United States Post Office has something like that, too, where they have certain mailboxes are, um, they have uh, barcodes on them or whatever. Yeah. And the mail delivery person must clock in or whatever, you know, so that they can see uh, how long it's taking them to get to that particular mailbox every day and etc. You know? Well, in that case, old James suddenly has an itch in the middle of his forehead for uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. the United States Postal Service, UPS. United uh, Parcels uh, Service, and I don't know how, how, how FedEx treats its people. I don't know. I don't know. But I, I have an itch in the middle of my forehead, and uh, we might as well also induct UPS, because I know they mistreat their employees terribly, and uh, uh, UPS and uh, the people running United States Postal Service for having that uh, sy crime. system yeah. for their drivers. Um, it's slave driving to me. Mm -hmm. um, it's trying to get as much production out of a person to drive them to fall over and die. Shizzler's Hall of Shame. Both no. of them are inducted. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's uh, uh it, it's like cracking the whip. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's like uh, it's like they, it's it, because of uh, Republicans deregulating companies. It sounds like they want to bring back the sweatshops of the old days. They can do anything they want. Yes. You know. So anyway, continue. As someone who has a profound respect. For America's founding, it sickens me to see how leaders of both political parties in Washington have ignored and abused the United States Constitution. However, I am fortunate to be one of very few Americans represented by someone who firmly believes in our nation's founding document. Representative Scott Garrett, Republican of Wantage in New Jersey. Wantage, New Jersey is all the way up in the corner and in, in uh, far northwestern New Jersey in Sussex County. Sussex County. It is It is going towards like Port Jervis, New York. It is a very rural area, mountains, lakes, forests. Uh, you notice that the more rural you get, the more right wing the people, be <laughs> the more right wing and uh, by and religious fanatic the people become. Doesn't surprise me. You know, some things form patterns that make sense. You know, when the Republican House leadership chose to abandon its constitutional powers in favor of suing President Obama for his lawlessness, Garrett was only one of a few Republicans to vote against the measure. He believed that filing such a lawsuit was not an authority outlined in the Constitution, and that attempting to rein in a lawless president by utilizing such a method would create a dangerous precedent. In a world that is growing ever more politicized, it is a relief to know that my representative will not betray his oath to uphold and defend the Constitution. Yeah. Garrett continues to stand for America's founding principles. Blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. More Republican lies, and who is this? Uh, this uh, Mr. Jonathan Vyad. What's his last name? Vyad. Vyad. That's correct. Jonathan Viagra. Vyad is a is a uh, corporate 
uh, ass, kiss, he's, uh, ass wait, kissing. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He's from teabagger. West, he's from Westwood. Now, Scott, I know Garrett is my representative too, along with Bill Pasquale. Well, so I, what is he? Uh, he represented Westwood too. That's Bergen County. Yeah. Why is he? Yeah. Why is he in our district? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he maybe he's from Wantage but is does not reside there anymore. Maybe he doesn't represent them. I don't know. The the, the Republicans maybe gerrymandered and who knows what they came up with. I really don't take um, what any Republican person says uh, seriously. I take it with a grain of salt. I I don't believe them. Not Himalayan pink. Not Himalayan pink Thank salt, you. which is what I use, but I do, uh, I do not respect any Republican. They have not earned any respect. So therefore, I really don't care how they feel or what they say. I I hear it, but you know, uh, this is all bullshit. You know, compared to when they get elected, when they actually get in, and what they do. Yeah, yeah exactly. There are those who will vote for Representative Scott Garrett because they mistakenly believe he is keeping costs down. Uh, keeping costs down at what expense? At <laughs> the expense of the poor. Yes. And, because and, 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 he doesn't have, want to keep costs down as far as the Pentagon is concerned and, or uh, corporate subsidies. And all of that, and uh, tax cuts for the rich. Well, okay? don't they like to remove uh, pensions and benefits from from uh, public servants? From yes. public servants, yes, public yes, workers. Yes. They're way overpaid. These public servants. Okay. Oh, everybody's way overpaid except the uh, the wealthy. Well, of course. Yeah. They're the job producers, no? Yeah, in mainland China. Yeah. And and office jobs in the Philippines. Garrett and I can disagree about whether the rich and corporations are being taxed too much. That point is moot. The important question is whether our tax dollars are being spent efficiently. It costs taxpayers an average of six million dollars a day to fund Congress. Garrett voted ceremoniously to defund the Affordable Care Act at least 50 times. He voted to shut down the government and voted twice not to raise the debt limit, which caused our country's credit rating to be downgraded and added additional costs to service our national debt. He also voted against the House budget, against reopening the government, against paycheck fairness, and against the Violence Against Women Act. Garrett's salary breaks down to more than $90 per hour. And his votes and actions, especially in regard to shutting down the government, mm -hmm. have cost this country almost $24.5 billion. One wonders if we can afford him. I would rather see the millions that were squandered used to put people back to work, get them off food stamps, and improve our infrastructure. The only job Garrett seems to be protecting is his own, and he is not worth the millions he has wasted to prove that he is ideologically pure. He is filling his campaign coffers oh. while the middle class has suffered. All right, this is a, that's good. It's a good reading. It's, it ended well. It ended accurately. Um, crony capitalism is very corrupt. The two-party system is very corrupt. And uh, um, it's not just Republicans. It, 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 it is uh, also corporatist Democrats. Um, the whole system stinks. It all comes from the conservative way of thinking, conservatism, because uh, you never see a um, a true progressive liberal politician doing these things. 
But they're not they're not corporatists. Because they're socialists. Right. What's the matter with you? So what does that tell you? That maybe Karl Marx before he got his system got corrupted? Well, any any system fair a more fair system that's any system that is social right. is obviously more fair than a capitalist system which only benefits the upper crust yeah. now what would you consider the uh, governments of uh, northern Europe Scandinavia would you consider them a hybrid of capitalism with socialism yeah well what you call it is uh, Denmark uh, Denmark what, what's the, the uh, one uh, with Norway the, Norway Sweden? Norway. No, Denmark is Dor Norway, Sweden, Denmark, all of these. Denmark, uh, uh, in some in, in some ways, uh, Germany, even though Germany has a pathetic uh, minimum wage of like eleven dollars an hour, compared to uh, well, it, it, over twenty dollars an hour in Scandinavia. Yeah, but compared to the United States, and it's like a, a gift from God, you know. Well, they. The, the re 725. American right. Republicans think 725 is a gift from God. It's a big, it's a big favor. Unless, unless you go to... Um, let them live on it! Unless you go to... Yeah, let them die, actually, is what they're you saying. Know? Let them starve. Unless you go to a progressive American city like Seattle, Washington, and I hear Los Angeles is starting to beef up its, its minimum wage, but uh, Seattle, $15 an hour. Hey, that's more realistic. Back when, back when the corporations paid thirty-two percent taxes and support revenue to the government, uh, our government at that time, okay, mm -hmm. and they were all making profits. So what's the big deal today? Mm -hmm. They're making more profits. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Yeah. they want it all. Yeah, because they're just greedy scum like the Koch brothers. That's correct. I want to salute Seattle, Washington, state of Washington in general, and uh, in, 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 in some ways also uh, uh, the Jerry, Governor Jerry Brown run state of California and the state of Vermont. I want to salute them for being uh, taking the lead and showing the perfect example of how the United States should be by being more progressive. They're the most progressive areas of the United States. Yeah, well, Mom Santo is throwing in the bucks, baby, to defeat that progressiveness. Okay. Well, how, when are then? When are the uh, when are the um, the asses of the masses going to grow some balls and and form a militia and <laughs> and, and take out these these you some. These some bitch CEOs. Some bitches. You have a guy in your group there. Uh, I I I I think his name is Mike something. Oh, M it, Mikel, Mikelos or Mike. I'm not sure who it is, but uh, some bitch. Uh, he always, whenever every a problem is presented to him or something like that, he says, "Where are the local politicians?" Local. Hey, Mike. They're, the they're on the take. What do you mean? Where the hell Lo are they? Local. <laughs> local yokel. Like they can, they're going to do something. <laughs> they're the most corrupt. <laughs> local politicians are the most corrupt. Jeepers creepers. Jeepers creepers. Uh, yeah, where yeah. where do I find these people that that slither into the group? I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's time for a break. Okay. Yes, it is. We're going to uh, break for lunch. Hold on. Hey. We're going to break for lunch, and um, we will be joined now, uh, any minute now, by our uh, wonderful voiceover artist, William H. Morrill III, who will do promo. And, uh, you know, of course, you will, uh, you will see some of the banners uh, that... Uh, relate to what we were talking about and then we will return for the second half of our show after we hear from the great William H. Morrill the third and uh, and that's it that's, that's it. it what can I say and stay then, tuned and then I will don't touch that dial don't touch that dial and then when we come back I will uh, discuss uh, how China surpassed recently, just just surpassed the United States of America, 
uh, uh, in having the largest economy in the world. And uh, we'll give our take on it. All right, so, meanwhile, we'll break for lunch. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times. So you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen. For the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye. Okay, we're back. Back from lunch and back from promo. And um, I would like to thank our voiceover artist, William H. Morrow III, for doing a wonderful promo as usual. And you see him throughout the show. Now, let us begin the second half of our show with uh, an article that I read online uh, stating that China has recently uh, surpassed the United States uh, in having the largest economy in the world. Uh -huh. Now, it's not the Chinese fault. Don't, don't be prejudiced and angry at China. Uh, because if it wasn't for corporate America, China would not have the number one economy in the world they, they would not have surpassed the United States uh, without the help of corporate America. And uh, who gives corporate America all this power to, uh, to pull, pull off all these shenanigans and, 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 and dirty deeds and everything? The people who deregulate corporate America, the Republicans. So uh, don't blame China. I mean, it, it was corporate America that helped build China's economy by outsourcing everything they could because they're just too damn stingy and greedy to pay a living wage to Americans. So what's your take on on this? Well, uh, you know, what's going to take? Uh, the, the trade agreements are all done in secret. Uh, we can't know anything about them, mm -hmm. and then at, at the end, when they're all done with NAFTA and GATT and all the other crap, all the stuff, we find that we gave away the store as usual in every trade deal. We give away the store. Mm -hmm. What the hell do we have to import mangoes from India and give them nuclear uh, 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 information? Yeah. The hell do we need a mangoes for? Well, or limes from Mexico. I love mangoes. They're very nutritious, but we grow them here. We do. We do. Just like lemons and limes. Why we got to get them then from Mexico? Well, we can grow them. Uh, or avocados. We can grow them. Uh, let's see. What does uh, Puerto Rico is uh, is owned by the United States? It's tropical. Grow mangoes in Puerto Rico. You know, they, they have a lot of poverty down there. Have all the farming there. You know, I mean, they, they, they get pineapples from the Philippines. They get it because 
of it's cheaper to get them get everything from these third world countries but we are giving them something when we are getting that crap well they're getting and it's usually the store yeah okay In other we words, give away the store for crap America's bending over too far backwards and giving giving away the store in other words it's an uneven trade it's a very it's uneven always trade. uneven all right they're un always uneven for America in these trade deals okay. when they are looked at when we are allowed to look at them look at NAFTA you see anybody trying to say we got to get rid of NAFTA we have to change NAFTA no it's just there a thorn in our side okay and now you got what the TPP the Trans-Pacific Partnership and that other one are both secret we can't know what they're about because they are all corporate grabs for power that's what they are okay at the expense of the United States. Yeah, it's funny. They they want the the mainstream population to continue to buy their products, to uh, satiate their greed, but they also want to take away all of our rights and continue to have us buy their products, even though when people become destitute and they don't have a pot to piss in, they can't buy their products. But, um, of course, they don't think long-term. No, they don't. So it's like, uh, it, it, it all will come back to bite them on the ass. Karma will bite them on the ass. Just like what happened with China. It'll just come back to to, to haunt them later. And, and, and it happened already. Uh, they created a monster. They created the Frankenstein, corporate America. And uh, China has its own currency. Is that still in effect? Of course. China has its own currency. And many countries like uh, Russia and Iran do not want to deal with American dollars anymore. Nope. And maybe they're switching to the Chinese currency. Who knows? You know, who knows? Or the Euros United or something. States, because of self-inflicted wounds, Yep. It's heading downward. Yep. But no, it's because of people on food stands. Lazy, poor people. That's what's causing oh, the yeah. United States. Oh, you're on unemployment. You're on welfare. You're lazy. You're lazy. You don't want to work. You don't want to work. Like there's so many jobs in the United States. There's no... You have to have... I try to explain to these, these idiot teabaggers, but they don't understand. They never do. You have to have opportunities and breaks before you in order for you to um, strive for the American dream, which is only for the rich. In order to better yourself, you have to have breaks and opportunities before you. They have to be there. They're not there. Wages have been stagnant for almost 30 years. Yeah. You the median income right now used to be 57000 It's now 51000 yeah, the, okay, po so the poverty. You can strive all you want. The poverty rate uh, level starts at what twenty two thousand. And what did one of your people say on the group? Twenty two thousand. If you want, you gotta get, you gotta educate yourself for a better job. Yes, somebody did say that. Okay, where are the better you get jobs? Better opportunities. Where are the better jobs so you can pay off the student loan for the better education? So you go Again, into debt. Though. And you, nobody wants to hire an entry-level employee. But then again, you got the problem of why? How did it happen that we, our survival, depends on a business in the private sector? The Industrial Revolution uh -huh. started that. Uh -huh. uh, before that, Americans produced their own food and their own living. Had their own land. Yeah, didn't you tell me since 17... Micah 4.4, 4, the Bible. In the millennium, all 
will have their own land and their own vine to sit under. In the world tomorrow. In the world tomorrow. Now, didn't you also say since 1776, only uh, 10% of Americans uh, ever increased the, increased their standard of living self-made? Upward mobility. Upward mobility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's another fact that the teabaggers... 90% uh, never do. Don't know. Well, they're not educated people. No, 90% never do, right. Um, and when they hear statistics and everything, they usually, like your other friend over there in one of your groups... They insult you. No, they, 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 they dismiss them. Uh, you know, they... they Oh, that's some dem crap or whatever, you know. Oh, that, that's a, a liberal propaganda. Yeah, that too. You, the, the libs. The lib, libs. They call stuff. them libtards. <laughs> they call us libtards. And they still, the idiots still mention the liberal media. What liberal media? Yeah. They're, they're corporate ass kissers, corporate cocksuckers. <laughs> there is no liberal media, you know. But anyway, let's get back to the show. Get back to the uh, readings, but uh, so that's it. Are we all quite mad here in the developed world? Possibly. A petition to save Excalibur, the pet dog of a Spanish nursing assistant who has contracted Ebola received more than 370,000 signatures before the animal was sedated and killed did the animal, as a precautionary did, measure. Did the animal test positive? Then why was the animal put down? Wednesday evening, as his corpse was taken away in a van for incineration, a crowd of activists who had clashed with police during the day were reportedly shouting, MURDERERS! I don't remember people clashing with police to persuade their governments to do more to help stop the spread of Ebola in Africa, where more than 3,400 human beings have died from the disease. Indeed, an online petition to persuade the U.S. government to fast-track research for an Ebola drug has so far received 152,534 signatures. By that measure, we care half as much about finding a cure for Ebola as saving a dog. I'm surprised that uh, Americans that were overseas in, in Liberia or wherever in Africa that contracted Ebola. I'm surprised they were not put in quarantine overseas and not let back into the United States. I, why were they let back in? Because we have better treatment over here. We have clean water, number one. Right. Uh, well, if you're like the white people that survived, but the black man died. That's because of some mistakes at the Texas hospital. Ah, bingo! The Texas hospital, the red state, the very red state of Texas, must have gave much better treatment for the white patients at, that had Ebola than the black man. Actually, I don't have any problem with the campaign for Excalibur, that's the dog, his owners locked him up in their abandoned apartment with a bathtub of water and more than 30 pounds of food when they were taken away by to be quarantined. The only outdoor space he could reach was a balcony he couldn't get down from. Even if the government didn't want to leave the dog unsupervised in an apartment for 21 days, it could have been quarantined elsewhere as safely as getting carted away for euthanasia. Britain used to quarantine every animal that arrived in the country for six months until recently. 
in case it had rabies. Yeah. Or so, still, we've known that as a species, we lack perspective about the relative value of life as well as risk. Remember the three gray whales that got trapped in the ice in Alaska in 1988? Such was the international outcry that one million dollars was spent trying to rescue them. Money that just might have been better spent combating the famine that was ravaging Ethiopia at the time. Earlier this year, a Danish zoo killed a baby giraffe called Marius to avoid inbreeding and fed it to the lions. Again, a fury ensued unmatched for any one of Syria's roughly 200,000 dead. A study at Northeastern University seems to have confirmed this preference we have for cute animals over humans, at least adult ones. What's truly crazy is that Teresa Romero, a nursing technician in a first world country hospital, contracted Ebola while treating a known carrier and yet had to tell doctors at least three times that she had a fever before they quarantined her. She could have been out of circulation <coughs> days earlier, but instead was told just to take some pain reliever. This is a terrible disease, and the rich world needs to do whatever it can to help Liberia and other African nations contain and defeat it. In our own countries, it is, un, it is controllable using good medical practice and shouldn't pose a significant threat. The Spanish medical authorities need to figure out how this could ever happen. In the meantime, a little perspective would be good. Other diseases pose immeasurably greater threats to us. Not to mention drunken drivers and unfettered gun ownership which respectively kill about 10,000 to 32,000 Americans annually. Mm -hmm. To my mind, crazy would be trying to quarantine African countries to keep Ebola out by cutting off flights to the outside world, as some have proposed. That would be far more senseless and heartless than killing or caring about a dog. Mm, poor thing. Poor innocent dog. Uh, yeah, and if we find out, and I'm sure they know uh, uh, absolutely now, now that whether it is not transferable to animals, you know? And it's a shame. Poor Excalibur. Okay. Well, I want to take this time. Of course, you know, <coughs> this is really a shame. I'm sure the uh, all the animal lovers in the PETA organization is up in arms about the euthanization of Excalibur. Uh, animal rights activists are probably livid about this, and uh, I, I, I agree with them. I, I uh, confer. Um, I don't know. Anyway, I would like to uh, say hello to my near dear friend uh, in Osaka, Japan, Miho. Okay, hello, Miho. And I will also like to say hello. What about the typhoon. It 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 it, it missed. It, she got it, but it it barely missed her her area. Yeah. She did she did not get the brunt of the typhoon. Thank God. Um, I would like to say hello to um, my good friend in Boca Raton, Florida, and, f and former WWE superstar, professional wrestler extraordinaire, uh, Mr. Ken Thiessen. 
who was also known as uh, back then as Rocco Cipriano. Greetings to Ken Thiessen, a shout out. I would like to uh, send my greetings to uh, uh, my administrators of the Facebook groups, uh, personal trainer to the stars Mario Petrus, and administrators uh, Sash uh, Boyle and um, Jolton Joe Stebbins, and also personal trainer uh, in Southern California. Uh, Mr. Rick Brown, Slick Rick Brown, I send greetings to. Uh, that's it. That's it. Um, all right. In the report on Governor Christie's supposed progressive stance on drug reform, it was stated that Governor Christie has said that legalizing drugs would encourage further use with respect to marijuana. Is it adults that he wishes to continue to arrest? The numbers of young people consuming cannabis in states that have legalized or have well populated medical pro pro programs, excuse me, are lower than many other states, as are road accidents and fatalities, opiate drug overdoses, and crime in general. What the governor has done in New Jersey is to take a big government, heavy regulated approach to the medical marijuana program, so that it has only 2,000 patients while states like Michigan and Oregon each have 50,000 or so patients. Fewer patients means less competition, quality, and higher prices, leading to less attractiveness to potential patients. This fear of legal cannabis is really a bigoted position against people who prefer that to alcohol and tobacco. Shouldn't we want to create jobs in the marijuana industry? Colorado, which has created 10,000 jobs through the legal pot program, directs taxes towards education and other citizen needs. With many national polls continuing to show a strong majority of Americans favor major changes to our marijuana laws, we do not need policy dictates from uneducated politicians mm -hmm. who do not have valid reasons to oppose cannabis use among adults. Yeah, um, I wonder if these articles I read online about the harmful effects of, of uh, pot smoking are accurate. It's smoke. They're accurate. So in other words, the the cancer destroying medicinal uh, positive um, uh, 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 assets of uh, uh, aspect of, of marijuana is in the uh, infusion of its of its ingredients, not the burning of of, of it as a smoking material, yeah. but as in, in, in Bake it in your brownies. Yeah, consuming consuming marijuana as an extract is what is extremely medicinal, and not in the smoking. So what you're saying is that uh, it sounds like it could be the tars created by the burning of marijuana, just like the, the with tobacco. The, it's the smoke. chemical. Whatever's in smoke. It's in smoke. It's there. The tobacco in cigarettes, cigars, burning leaves, yeah. it's smoke. Well, plus the tobacco industry spiking the uh, cigarettes doesn't help the situation, but if you have smoke, you probably most likely have carcinogens already present. That's correct. In the burning of the, of the herb. Uh, so what you're saying is uh, even in the old days when 
the Native Americans smoked the peace pipe, uh -huh. it was still harmful? Yes. So aside from the chemicals that they put in it to make of it course. more addictive, it's still, you're burning something? It's smoke. Right. Okay, you smoke, you're, you're allowing it into your lungs. It's the same thing, is it similar to a, a steak or hamburger being charred black on a barbecue? Acrylamides! Acrylamides. Cause cancer. When you brown stuff. Well, when you brown, I don't think browning a pot roast just to a, a, a reasonable, you know, I mean, not overdone, but slightly browning a pot roast on both sides before pressure cooking it, I don't think that has acrylamides in it. Uh, it probably does. Low. I'm not talking Even about toast. Well, browning. I mean, okay. lower temperature browning. Just browning it. Yeah. Browning. browning. It. You're trying to say my sourdough pumpkin pancakes yes. that get golden brown yes. on each side. Yeah, it's got acrylamide. Has a little acrylamide in it. Uh -huh. So what should we do? Should we eat Irish style and steam everything and boil everything? You gotta go vegan. So for Thanksgiving this year, I should eat like a huge tofu turkey? Correct, correct. Gee, how would I make Absolutely. my gravy? Absolutely. Mock, you can make a uh, mock, pomegranate gravy. Mock, a pomegranate gravy? That's correct. Mock gravy. Or maybe prune. Prune gravy. Prune gravy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, continue. In a medical first, a woman in Sweden has given birth after receiving a womb transplant. The doctor who performed the pioneering procedure said on Friday, the 36-year-old mother received a uterus from a close family friend last year. Her baby boy was born prematurely, but healthy, last month. And mother and child are at home now doing well. I hope that that woman that gave up her uterus, uh, I assume she might have been, you know, uh, had no interest in getting pregnant again. Maybe she had, had no use for her uterus. So I hope she got compensated substantially for giving the uterus. The identities of the woman and her husband were not disclosed. Okay. The baby is fantastic. Baby's okay? All right. Said Dr. Mats Brandstrom, professor of obstetrics and gynecology at the University of Gothenburg and Stockholm IVF. Mm, they should, should have just cloned it, you know, laboratory grew the child. Who led the research and delivered the baby with the help of his wife, a midwife. But it is even better to see the joy in the parents and how happy he made them. Brandstrom said it was still sinking in that we have actually done this. The feet opens up a new but still experimental alternative for some of the thousands of who are unable to have children because they lost the uterus to cancer okay. or were born without one. Yeah. Be well, before this case proved uh, the concept can work, some experts had questioned whether a transplanted womb would be able to nourish a fetus. Others have questioned whether such an extreme step, expensive and fraught with medical risks, would even be a realistic option for many women. Yeah, I would say adoption would be more realistic. Dr. Glenn Schatman, past president of the Society for Assisted Reproductive Technologies and a Cornell University fertility specialist said, womb transplants are likely to remain very uncommon. 
this would not be done unless there were no other options, he said. It requires a very long surgery and not without risk and complications. For the proud parents, the years of research and experimentation were well worth the wait. <coughs> it was a pretty tough journey over the years, but we now have the most amazing baby, the father said in a telephone interview. He's very, very cute. And he doesn't even scream. He just murmurs. Really? He's not a, uh, not a big mouth kid that cries in the middle of the night, screams bloody murder? He said he and his wife, both competitive athletes, were convinced the procedure would work despite its experimental nature. Dr. Brand Stam, Star Strom, and colleagues transplanted wombs into nine women. Yeah. Over the last two years, as part of a study. What's the percentage of success? But complications forced removal of two mm -hmm. of the organs. Oh, it's a foreign object, a foreign body being put into a person. Earlier this year, Brandstrom began transferring embryos into the seven other women. He said there are two other pregnancies at least 25 weeks along. Before these cases, there had been two attempts to transplant a womb in Saudi Arabia and Turkey. But no live births resulted. Doctors in Britain, France, Japan, Turkey, and elsewhere are planning to try similar operations, but using wombs from women who have just died instead of from live donors. Oh, cadaver wombs. I imagine they were very fresh. They were, they, 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 they I imagine they had a donor card, an organ donor card. The Swedish woman had healthy ovaries, but she was born without a uterus, mm -hmm. a syndrome seen in one girl in 4,500. She received the uterus from a 61-year-old family friend who had gone through menopause after giving birth to two children. Brandstrom said he was surprised such an old uterus was so successful. Yeah, I am too. But that the most important factor seems to be that the womb was healthy. Mm -hmm. The recipient has had to take three medicines to prevent her body from rejecting the new organ. Okay. About six weeks after the transplant, she got her menstrual period. Wow. A sign the womb was healthy. And was accepted. Now the, the, the drug to force your body to accept the organ is, a, is a temporary... No, 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 You have no, to no, take no. it for the rest oh, of the... rest of your life. Oh, gosh. Really? Yes, yes. I think it's a oh, lot. People oh, with my liver God. liver transplants and kidney transplants, they are. Oh, yes, oh my yes. God. That's horrible. Certainly. Rest of your life? I think it's better for these women to just adopt that to, you got to be dependent on this drug in other words when you stop taking this drug your body starts to attack reject it reject it that's not good you know what and those drugs they lower your immunity uh, okay oh boy so which you have which to be careful which would put cause trouble for you in other ways with infections Yep, and cancer cells, God forbid, abnormal cells in your body. That's not oh, yeah. good. I don't like it. Uh, I'm more concerned about the medical science of, um, and I think it's exciting as all hell, uh, growing uh, organs in a laboratory, which they are doing already, and have made successful transplants because they're using your uh, DNA or stem cells or whatever. 
Mm -hmm. In other words, they are they are custom growing the organ for you, so it will your body will accept it without having to take the drug. I think that is a real um, achievement, a, a revolutionary achievement, and of course, stem cell research in general is very important. Mm -hmm. You know, for paralyzed people and you know, um, and disabled people in general um, but uh, we have a room for a, a, I mean we have a time for a dear Abby or a that's exactly what we're gonna get I had a feeling I had a, a little feel change of pace tomato paste toothpaste oh change of paste pace, pace. all right lay it on me brother I am a male in the training department at my office a lot of times, because the people I train are new hires, there are dress code violations from people who appear to be testing the limits. Oh, you mean like girls dressing in a hoochie manner? Most of the violations involve women who wear clothing that's too revealing. Inappropriate for a business uh, workplace? Yes. In spite of the fact they receive a document at the start of training explaining what is and what is not appropriate attire. And it's their responsibility as a new employee to read the manual? I feel uncomfortable addressing dress code issues with the opposite sex. It causes trouble. I'm telling you, it's it causes trouble, and it will cause trouble. I have always asked a female in the department to do it for me. I understand where he's coming from, yeah. My problem is, my manager has told me, I need to be able to deal with issues like this if I want to move forward in my career. Well, the problem is, I got news for that female supervisor that if the male if the male supervisor has the uh, female employee come into his office and say look uh, you're in violation of the dress code you're too scantily clad for the office and uh, then should the girl will probably say scantily clad why why are you looking at you staring at my breast why are you looking at my ass uh, uh. you know she might make a big stink about it and he, he probably feels funny doing it but um, but but that answer that his boss gave him is um, is typical of, of female supervisors. They love to threaten men under them. They love to give them ultimatums. It's almost like they're insecure by being a woman. They need they need to uh, enforce their authority and their power. My question to you and your readers is as a woman right would you feel more uncomfortable with the male boss addressing a too much cleavage or skirt too short issue than you would with another female depends how it's worded though i would word it differently you know and have you any suggestions for wording in this situations oh i do I do. I would just simply well, let's see. Well, let's see what I say, and then let's see what the dear Abby says. I would say you are in violation of the company dress code. Uh, please feel free. No, no. Please reread it, assuming that she read it already, which she probably didn't. Read it. It was given to you. Read it at home, and please comply with it. Period. I won't say anything about use words, you know, to describe her outfit. I would just say you're in violation of the company dress code. Read the manual when you get out of work, when you get home, read the manual and please comply with the company rules. That's all he has to say. That's all he has to say. 
Speaking for myself, dear Abby says, I think I'd prefer to hear that message from another woman. However, <coughs> excuse me, my preference is beside the point. You have a job to do, and that is to enforce the rules of your company. So when you tell a female employee that she's not complying with the dress code, use the wording in the employee handbook or the document the person received when she was hired. Hopefully the wording is specific. What did I just say? That's it? I was right. That's it? Paul James was right. Ah, uh, by George. Ah, by George. Ah, by George. By George. I gotta do a little Mr. Magoo. Jim Backus. Oh, by George. That James P. Madonna's right again. Oh. Uh, anyway. Yeah, let's end with a... Uh, oh, the other chick. Let's end with a Christie. Chris Christie. That's right. Balloon Boy, the uh, the, the 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 fat uh, uh, dirigible made of Teflon, where where nothing sticks, no charges seem to be sticking to him yet. Go ahead. It seems that Governor Christie is one who will do anything to seek the far right base of the Republican Party in his quest for a presidential run in 2016. In this particular case, Harrison notes how he will shamelessly take food off the tables of 160,000 needy and deserving New Jersey residents. Yeah, and have it sent to his house, to his kitchen. Christie remains disingenuous in his remarks and lack of concern for the people he represents as he continues to tout his job as the best in the world. Well, the best in the world doesn't look like he's missing too many meals. And he doesn't look like his diet, his, his uh, by, uh, gastric bypass surgery is helping. In lieu of gallivanting across the country to raise dollars for the Republican Governors Association, he should look at investing $3.2 to get $53 million back which to the average person would be a no-brainer. As always, finances never seem to matter to Christie, unless he is spending money on something he wants, or taking it away from someone else. Rather than be outraged by the small return on federal taxes to support New Jersey citizens, Christie steps aside and gives more away. Where is the logic in this thought pattern? Of the four states named that have chosen to do nothing to help their citizens, it is interesting to note that all are run by Republicans, who in most cases are under tremendous public pressure to make dramatic changes in their failing policies to reflect what the public wants in their states. Oh, come on. How come I'm not surprised by all this? A final fact that eludes Christie is that 46 states have already amended laws to provide their citizens with continued coverage in the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program known as SNAP or food stamps. Well, I don't know about that, but I know Chris Christie just snaps his fingers and gets all the food he wants and probably the best food money can buy because he's looks like he's getting fatter and fatter. He's a he's a he's a gluttonous, selfish, Republican, stingy. They're all the same. They're they're the most predictable people in the universe. The right wing. They're all predictable. And that doesn't surprise me or upset me because it's obvious that they're demons. 
demon led. It's obvious. They're rotten to the core. They're elitist. They're rich. And they just care about what they have. They're, 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 uh, 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 con they live by the get way of life, never the give way. And uh, they just don't care what you have as long as they have theirs. But, you know, th that doesn't upset me because it, it, it's obvious what they are from day one. They're, you know, I, what, what bothers me are the multitudes of Americans out there that when they vote for a Republican are voting against their own best interest. They're, these Americans often live in impoverished uh, uh, rural areas of the United States, in red states, in, 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 in low-income areas, and they vote Republican because of their crazy, unproven religious cults that they follow, whether it be evangelical or Baptist or whatever, um, and they're voting against their own best interests by voting Republican. It's totally illogical. It makes no sense whatsoever. It's stupid. And, uh, you know, and, 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 you know, they, they, they listen to idiots like Sarah Palin and, and Rush Limbaugh and that, um, Shafly, what the hell, Phyllis Shafly, the old bag. And they listen to these crazy statements and they take it seriously and they believe it. And they're and they're and they're they they're getting poorer and poorer by the year, and they continue to vote Republican. That's what bothers me. Mm -hmm. So, before we say goodbye, anything you would like to add? Not really, uh, because I... next week uh, we'll be saying basically the same stuff again. Because it just goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Nothing has changed. Their ideology is not amenable to change. Nothing has changed under the sun. Isn't that in the Bible somewhere? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it is. Nothing it's in Psalms, I think. Nothing has changed under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. That's it. That's it. There's nothing, nothing new, new under the sun. It just goes around like a revolving door back to human nature, to the natural sinfulness of human nature. We're living in the end times. Things are getting worse. Society's getting worse. People suck. People are getting worse. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, 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 the greed, the corruption increases. That's why the corporations but are But Fox News are is there with American exceptionalism. Deregulated. We are great. We are great. We are fantastic. Oh, like uh, Larry the Cable Guy, that goofball uh, comedian from, uh, the he from? He's from Nebraska, Omaha, Nebraska. Everything in America is great. Americans wouldn't stand for that. America's number one. American products are number one. America, 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 America. He's always waving the flag. What a, he's an annoying, obnoxious, annoying human being. Larry the Cable Guy. You suck. It's American products. Everything's America, America, America. Patriotism, America. America's number one. If American products are so great, why are we importing all this other crap? Cars, radios, cell phones, etc., etc. Yeah, et why, why is the Samsung Galaxy blowing every everything away when it comes to high technology and, and smartphones and how come the united states can't make an electronic product to save its life that, 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 that it's worth its salt the united states gave away the uh uh uh, uh vcr mm -hmm. or was it the tape recorder the vcr i'm saying It gave it TIAC, was the company. Just gave it away. It didn't. They didn't want to produce them. Mm -hmm. So here comes Japan, producing these things and selling them and getting rich. Same thing with drugs. America Research and Development develops a drug, gives it to a pharmaceutical company, and they make big bucks on them. You've seen it. The 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 that the. the, 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 the uh, banner up there with the drugs in the, in Canada and in the United oh, States. Oh, the price of and the, the price difference? The price difference of pharmaceuticals, yeah. yes. 
Yeah. Yes, sir. I mean, what accounts for that except greed? It's the same stinking drug. It's just a different place. Oh. And they expect that people in America have more money. So they'll spend more on these stupid drugs. You know? I'm glad you mentioned it because uh, as soon as we sign off, you're going to see that very banner. And you, you can hit the pause button and you can read all the facts as long, and write it down. But it shows you the difference and how the United States uh, businesses, American businesses, price gouge the, pe the consumer. They rip, can't get away with it in other countries. Rip off the consumer, but you don't. You can't get away with it in other countries because right. other countries probably have corporate regulations yeah. to defang the demons, the greedy hey. demons. And that's that. But anyway, thank you for joining us for uncensored, hard-hitting truth. It's uh, James P. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman saying, "Have a." great weekend and a, and, a, and a great autumn week and um, go get yourself some nice uh, pumpkin pancakes or pumpkin pie oh. or whatever you know and uh, if you're gonna make it yourself uh, you really don't need much in terms of sweeteners and spices use a little stevia use less pumpkin pie spices because uh, you do not want to overpower the pumpkin flavor with too much of that nutmeg cinnamon. cinnamon. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said before, when we were off the air, I have my delicious uh, um, smoke, special smoke kielbasa, uh, kashanka blood sausage from the Pias, the Polish uh, establishment Pias. And. Uh, what else did I get? Oh, the, the uh, coarse ground Kosciuszko mustard. All right. With horseradish. All right. Well, Dan, no, it no, doesn't have that in it, but it's the... What? No, it's, it's just the coarse ground mustard. I thought Kosciuszko had horseradish in all of it. It might. I haven't really read it. I might. Oh my God. But, but it's the it's the, it's the spicy brown mustard, yeah. but it's, it's coarse ground. But it's, it's a wonderful local company, uh, provisions, they make the sausages, uh, everything fresh on the premises, smoked, smoked everything. Frankfurter's fantastic. So uh, anyway, we'll see you. This has been a Megalife 21 production.